This is It Was a Thing on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dregs of humanity. Episode 179, Submission 1592. The Larry Bud Melman Centennial. Well, guys, this month in July, we are celebrating the 100th birthday of one of the most unlikeliest people that ever became a celebrity. And we're talking about an old man in 1982 by the name of Calvert DeForest, who showed up on the first episode of of Late Night with David Letterman to deliver this monologue right here. Good evening. Certain NBC executives feel it would be a little unkind to present this show without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold a show featuring David Letterman, a man of science who sought to create a show after his own image without reckoning upon God it's one of the strangest tales ever told. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you don't care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to... Well, we've warned you. And little did we know in that cold open, he would go on to become an important part of... Late Night with David Letterman, and then eventually The Late Show with David Letterman when it moved to CBS. And let's just add a, a fixture in television in the 80s and 90s. Yep. And it's like he was basically, here you have this short, dumpy, impish old man, and he's just being simple, and everybody is resonating with it. Oh, yes. It's like, here's this old guy who's on TV... And he's just doing the most ridiculous stuff on television. You just can't help but love it. You just he can't. You just love this guy. It's like you look at that sort of thing, and what do you even say to him, or what do you what do you even say about him? But yeah, he would quickly become a regular on Late Night with David Letterman as Larry Bud Melman, doing such things as Mister Larry's Toast on a Stick, and. And Melman buses. Oh, some of the great fake ads of all time. In fact, we'll play some Mr. Larry's Toast on a Stick for you right here. What do you give that special guy or gal on Christmas Day? What do you give to say I think you're special in every way? <laughs> give the gift that folks love most. Give them all the gift of toast. <laughs> then Christmas morn, they'll wait to see. Toast and more toast neath the tree. Hey, hey, kids and moms. They make great stocking stuffers. And Junior's eyes will really light up when he sees this festive holiday tin. So Mr. Larry's is the gift to pick. But remember, kids, don't eat the stick. Toast is all that you'll be needing. Wood can cause internal bleeding. Merry Christmas, toast lovers. <laughs> All right, let's, let's... Hey, 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 kids, if you like toast, but hate to feel the bread between your fingers, then how about a snack that's easy and quick? Mr. Larry's toast on a stick. You won't hate the taste because it's flavor-free. It's the perfect snack for a guy like me. Just pop one in the toaster, press side down, and reach for the stick when it's nice and brown. Just think, you may never have to touch your toast again. And remember, kids, Mr. Larry says, don't eat the stick, because wood splinters can cause internal bleeding. <laughs> He's not wrong. And that's the great thing about these all these Larry Bellman skits is the laugh he makes. The forced laughter he makes at the end of each skit. As if to say that's the joke. Ha 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 <laughs> toast on a stick. It predated Ryan Stimpy's Powdered Toast Man by eight years. Oh, man. Do you imagine if that was actually a thing? I'd eat it. 
What, toast on a stick or powdered toast? Toast on a stick. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? I, I would buy it, yeah. Who never looked at a piece of toast and said, I wish I never had to touch this? By the way, special shout out to Don Giller. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Don, for giving us that great. They took my show away from the last episode. Oh, by the way, Mike, you found something relating to they took my show away, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, and it was in the Calvert de Forest book, wasn't it? No. Uh, oh. Actually, uh, th- this is something that if you're a Letterman fan and you don't have this, really go to like a half price books or a library or a book sale and buy it. This is actually a, a book. It is, it's called Late Night with David Letterman, the book. It, it was published in 1985. And there's basically, I don't want to say transcripts. It, it's basically a compilation of images and text from uh, different uh, skits that Letterman did over the first, I'd say, two to three years. And one of the first things I found here on page 19 is they took my show away an after school special. Well, I'm not going to get into it because you just heard this at the end of the last episode, but pretty much it's the entirety of that segment in image form along with the uh, the text, the, the, I don't want to say the script, but the dialogue, let's say. If you ever want to imagine what a late night with David Letterman skit would look like as a Doctor Who loose cannon reconstruction, there you go. That's your book. Best five ninety eight I ever spent. But of course, there was one classic Larry Bud Melman moment that we have to talk about from 1983, and we watched it in the prep before the episode where Larry was sent by Dave to the New York Port Authority bus terminal. Was he doing a shoot for Melman bus lines? No. no. He's just talking to people, getting off the bus. And it's just so absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he's he's like the one person welcoming committee. Yeah, he's like a one person welcoming committee. Yes, welcoming yes. all these people on the bus from the Port Authority. Right, the bus. He located at Forty Second Street and Eighth Avenue, and he's standing by right now. Can we go to Larry at the Port Authority bus depot? There is the. Uh, well, all right. There's all the, the bus passengers. There's the bus. Of- terminal and uh boy look at the <laughs> and look he's wearing a he's wearing <laughs> he's wearing a welcome stash and he's got an nbc flagged mic and he has a tray of what appears to be moist towels yes but look at what it says on the stash no welcome home. welcome no it does no it's an n no oh, it's an n Nelcom. I thought that was like some sort of uh, equipment that was uh, blocking out half of the W. No, it says Nelco. And uh, and there's there's Larry with the banner that says Nelcom. <laughs> and... <laughs> Larry, can you can you hear me? Yeah. How are you? <laughs> how are you, Larry? Fine. And uh, how's the uh, atmosphere there at the Port Authority bus depot? Oh, it's just great. Uh-huh. We're waiting for the people to get off the bus. Yeah, what what was the most recent bus arrival, Larry? We haven't had any yet, but we have the bus driver. You have a bus <laughs> driver. Have a bus driver. Let me ask you this, Larry. How is it you have no buses arriving, but yet you have a driver there? Yeah, well, I guess he got in from one of the other buses. <laughs> He's here. Excuse me, what's your name? Yeah, Peter yeah, Webster. that's uh, that would have been my. Did you hear that, no. David? His name is Peter Webster. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. His last okay, name was... just a second. Your name, Peter Webster. Peter Webster. Right. And where where were you coming from? Hartford, Connecticut. And how was the trip? Not bad. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but then it gets even more ridiculous when he when there's a random old lady that walks. Past into the shot, and Larry interviews her, and this is just gold. Here we go. Oh, I have a person here. Hello there. How? Welcome to New York, sometimes called Fun City. <laughs> you know, Mike, I've lived in New York State all my life. 
Do you know how many times I've heard New York City referred to as Fun City? Do you want to take a guess? I, I'm guessing the number may be one, like right now. Yes, right now. That's the only time oh. I've ever heard it referred to as Fun City. <laughs> <laughs> and we should also add that the sash does actually say welcome on it. The, oh. the, the sash material. It, it did say welcome if you looked at the, the video there. Okay. So, so, no, there wasn't a misspelling of, of welcome. No. no oh. what the heck? Okay. Anywho. All right. Here's the comedy. Here we go. Oh, my <laughs> and where, where are you from? From the Eastern Shore of Virginia. Oh. Do you have any questions about New York? <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Did you have a snack? <laughs> well, won't you please? <laughs> now, can we please describe for the audio listeners what we saw? I think what we saw was Larry Bud Melman hitting on that passenger. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but even deeper. Uh, again, since Larry Bud Melman is the one person welcome wagon, he gave this uh, passenger uh, a, a warm towel, a, a nice, warm, moist towel. Yes, but the best part is when he's asking her questions, like he gives, the, he hands the mic over to her face right before he ends the question. So yeah, that's can... why you don't hear the audio too well at some points. Yeah, which makes it even more funny. <laughs> Just absolutely effing ridiculous. Oh, my God. Oh. I could just imagine going to that bus terminal and just having all sorts of fun with Larry. Can you imagine? I, I can imagine going to that bus terminal now, and there's a big mural or a big sign saying, Welcome to Fun City. Welcome <laughs> to Fun City. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have another remote right here. It's from January 11th, 1984. Here's Larry at the Empire State Building. Woo! Oh, this is That's a good fun. place for a remote. Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. All over the planet come to New York City, and eventually they find their way up to the Empire State Building. And tonight we're going to meet a few of those folks and uh, chat with them. <laughs> <laughs> State Building, sometimes called Big Rudy, truly the greatest marvel of 20th century engineering, as seen here depicted on this lifelike monitor. What the hell is Standing a full 1,250 feet above Fifth Avenue, 102 stories of iron, steel, concrete, wood, aluminum, and cotton pile. It is said to be the greatest achievement of modern man. It is only 204 feet shorter than Chicago's massive Sears Tower and only 1,350 feet shorter than the World Trade Center here in Manhattan. So at least it is the world's third tallest building. Unless you count the Trade Towers as two, then it's the fourth tallest, but it's still very big. In fact, it's safe to say it's one of the biggest man-made structures. And it's certainly taller than one of Rock and Roll's Wikipedia tallest didn't exist, kids. James Taylor, who stands a meek... No, in, in my day, we had Larry Bud Melman. Story. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's meet some visitors. Oh. <laughs> Did your ears pop on the way up? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have for lunch? <laughs> I had a ham and cheese sandwich. Pizza I had. Any pet peeves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <not really. laughs> well, here's an interesting fact about the world's third or fourth tallest building. The <laughs> third or fourth. I see you're wearing a shirt. That's an amazing coincidence. Because among the tenants in this building are more than 300 makers of shirts. Neckwear, sportswear, nightwear, and underwear. All their representatives. Won't you please, please enjoy a hot towel? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Larry's using like those torques you use to get food off a plate at the yeah. Barn. He's also using those uh, trays that are likewise used in cafeteria. Yeah, like warming trays. Yes, and he's warming. Doing... Tra- he's using warming trays and a pair of tongs to deliver hot towels. That's class. Oh, it is. Yeah, I'm just glad he's asking the important questions. Like, did your ears pop on your way up? Did you? Well, it could have happened. It really could have. No, I, I was actually. Oh, I've like, got enough last, lights. Yeah, last year I was I was in the Willis Tower. I went up to the little sky window thing. You guys saw the pictures. My ears popped. Some would argue that my ears haven't been the same since. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, in addition to Larry Bud Melman. Sometime around 1984 to 1988, Larry had another character called Kenny the Gardener. So we're going to play one of this right here. This is just ridiculous. Could have prepared us for the outpourings of love and affection our viewers, and particularly small children, have showed on this new showered, rather showered on this new character. Requests for the theme song alone have run in the tens of thousands. <laughs> so, without further ado, Kenny the Gardener. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny the gardener is here, uh, bringing us plants and good cheer. Yeah, Kenny, you know love's a crazy game. You can fertilize plants, but you can't water your heart. Having a row, making it work, working it out, having fun. Yeah, Kenny. <laughs> He's got a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Hiya, 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 Mr. Letterman. Well, uh, hi there, Kenny. Uh, hang on just a minute, okay. uh, Kenny. By the way, that's the longest introduction I've ever seen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the characters portrayed said. in this sketch represents only a tiny portion of America's gardeners, the large majority of whom are hardworking, patriotic citizens and an asset to our great nation. All right. Uh, Kenny, uh, did you have a nice weekend? What? I said, did you have a nice weekend, Kenny? I sure did, Dave. Well, nice to hear that. Why don't you tell us all about it? Well, let's see. Saturday, got out of bed about nine. Mm-hmm. Got dressed, brushed my teeth, shaved, had a brand muffin, read the paper. Uh-huh. Went to the hardware store, bought some two-inch nails, some co- copper tubing, uh-huh. and a hose. Then on the way home, suddenly the emptiness of my mundane life came crashing down upon me like a sack of potting soil. Uh-huh. Oh. Suddenly, all the usual everyday surroundings started to take on an eerie, menacing glow. Uh-huh. And oh. in a few minutes, moments... I was so overcome by a sense of hopelessness and despair, I was on the verge of taking my own life. <clears throat> and uh, that's, that's your idea of a nice weekend? Sure. Well, then I had a nice cool root beer and felt much better. Oh, that's good. You care for a gardening tip A today? gardening tip? Sure, we'd love a gardening tip, okay. Kenny. Okay. Don't throw away that used Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. Chop up the pieces and spread them around your yard. For an effective and eye-catching mulch. Thank you. <laughs> this guy. Now, uh, Kenny, uh, tell me, how's your brother? Well, you know Charlie. Always another get-rich-quick scheme. Boy, that's Charlie all over. Last week, he thought he saw the image of Elvis in a grilled cheese sandwich. Uh-huh. He'll never make a dime off that. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, all right, Kenny, uh, as always, you, you've left us totally mystified. How about a song? Oh, sure. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to hear a song now. Awesome. This is going to be great. Time to stop your scheming. Time your day was through. Can't you hear the bugle softly say? Time you should be dreaming.
I need to add that opening montage. Yeah. That may have been the most like energetic and enthusiastic I've ever seen Larry Bud Melman. Oh yeah. Oh, his his personality really came out in that montage and those the those snapshots in the open of that. I love that song at the end though. I need oh. somebody to sing that song to me at the end of my day. <laughs> well, just, God... just to, you know, bring me back down. Oh yeah. Because, you know, that first question he uh, answered. I think we all can relate to that. Yes. Well, guys, speaking of questions, did you know that Larry had his own advice segment on Late Night with David Letterman? But we should probably say he's not a lawyer. No, he's not. It's called Ask Mr. Melman. I want to see what these people would actually ask him. Well, we're going to find out. Thank you so much. Isn't that a uh, isn't that a swell band? Aren't they? Uh... Mm. <laughs> uh, coming up uh, tomorrow on our program, actress Heather Thomas will Ooh, be here. Ooh, Heather Thomas! <laughs> and uh, the Peter poor man's Dunkley Heather Locklear. And also Bud Wentz will be here tomorrow. That's Bud Wentz. B u double d w e n t z. Bud Wentz. From the New York Hall of Science. Oh. Where, where Batman used to live, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for a very popular segment on this program. It's Axe Mr. Melman. Now, here are the rules for tonight's proceeding. Mr. Melman appears courtesy of Atlantic Records, where he is currently waxing their lobby. The opinions expressed by Mr. Melman are not necessarily his own. He gets most of them from things he overhears in the steam room. Home viewers are advised that this segment will be over in approximately five minutes. We'll see you then. And finally, remember, Mr. Melman is an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. Oh, he is an attorney this episode. Oh, yeah. This must be a later episode because we have the new look of Yeah, from 87. A hearty good evening to my wonderful, wonderful television family. I'm Larry Bud Melman. I'm here to answer your questions about personal problems, money problems, and affairs of the heart. So let's get started. Larry, you know, I, I couldn't help but notice that you're not wearing your flowing caftan tonight. <laughs> no, no more flowing caftan. I saw a tape of my last appearance and I looked like an idiot. <laughs> Why didn't someone say something to me? I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. Oh. Now, let's have the first question. Okay, thanks, Larry. So you're steamed about that captain yes. thing, huh? Well, I don't blame you. Who has the uh, first question Thank tonight you, for Mr. Melman? Hi, what's your name, sir? Dave Pascal. Stand up, Dave. Where are you from? I'm from Save Long Island. Where? Save Long Ooh, Island? Oh, Save yeah. Island. Yeah. You go to school out there? You work out there or both? I go to school up in Hyde Park. Uh, I see. And what yeah, are you please. studying? Uh, to be a chef at the Culinary Institute. Oh, good. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. You have a, uh, you have a question tonight for uh, uh, Mr. Melman. Yeah. Larry, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I had a uh, class today at the Culinary, and I made a consomme. Oh, consomme. And it just didn't come out quite clear. I had a lot of trouble. The chef was yelling and everything. Can you tell me what to do about that? His problem that? is he had cloudy consomme, yeah. Larry. <laughs> Nothing I could do. That's not David, hard. do you want a suggestion about your consomme? Oh, yeah. I've got a suggestion for you. <laughs> Put it down the drain. People want something that will stick to their ribs. Something with big chunks of beef and potato. Americans didn't clear the wilderness and tame a continent with their bellies full of consomme. <laughs> Sit down, pal. Hey, if he waited 30 years, they would show him how to make it on down. YouTube. <laughs> A hundred packs of gum. A <laughs> hundred packs of gum. <laughs> Who's next for? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. What's your name? Grace Capuano. Grace, nice to have you here. Where do you live? Staten Island. And you work out there? Work I go in the to city? School. Where do you go to school? St. John's. What do you study? Education. Uh huh. And you're going to be what? Teacher. A teacher. Good for you. Larry, uh, by the way, try and get a breath for some of these answers. All right. What What is your question? What will Prince Edward do now that he's been kicked out of the Royal Navy? I think he left. I don't think he was kicked out, was he? Didn't he just leave? Packed it in and left. He left. He left the Royal Navy, uh, Larry. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is, th is that on the cards? 
<laughs> Stick to the cards, okay? <laughs> Keep, keep it to the kayfabe, Larry. You take your two-bit opinion somewhere else, pal. <laughs> All right, Gracie, I know what you've heard, and it's true. He's staying on the couch at my place. <laughs> He's a young man with a lot of things to sort out. But he makes a damn fine picture of Rob Roy's and always answers the phone politely. Which is more than I can say for that sponging King Olaf and his screaming brat. Bob Rooney, please give this nice person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? Okay. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back with Tempers. Oh, and if you stick around, they'll introduce you to Tempest Bledsoe. I love the fact that, okay, in, after every question, Larry says to one guy, please give this person something. Like, one thing we watched before we started the show was, please give this man two T-shirts. Not one T-shirt, two T-shirts. Two T-shirts. Yeah, and that is the question Greg had. Why does anybody need two T-shirts? Maybe they're different sizes. Dirty. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But a hundred packs of gum? Really? That's useful, though. Yeah, I guess. Not, not saying a shirt isn't. Well, it depends, depends what size is the shirt. Well, guys, did you know that Larry Bud Melman was on Hollywood Squares? Stop it. I, I oh. knew he was, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was on that week with New Edition, wasn't he? Yes, he was on with New Edition. Uh, I love New Edition, but you know what, guys? I don't love New Edition as much as I love Wings. I have to say that. Hmm. Well, but, New Edition is my 80s slash late 90s musical Wings. Okay. Well, would you believe they actually let Larry Bud Melman host Tommy Wood Squares for his segment in 1986? You have the receipts, don't you? Oh, yes. Are you ready for this? Well, well, they let Alf host for a segment, so yeah, why not Larry Bud Millman? Yeah, let's see how he does here. Here we go. Tony Hughes, Hollywood Square. And here's your host, Larry Bud Millman. Hello, and welcome again to the Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Hello, Squares. <laughs> What a good-looking group you are. <laughs> Hello, John Davidson. Hello, everybody. Well, it's so good to see you back on the show. How is Karen Valentine? <laughs> oh, now let's get our contestants. That hair, though. Let's meet our contestants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on my right is Bruce Furman. <laughs> on my left is Ruth Swidlow. How are you? Nice to see you again. <laughs> the object of the game is simply to win tic-tac-toe. Three squares across, down or diagonally, or to acquire as many squares as you can. The winner of each game will receive $500 in cash. And whoever wins the most money at the end of the show will have a chance to drive away in one of these beautiful Toyotas. <laughs> Yeah, check those Toyotas out. Let me tell you, there's nothing like a spiffy new sled to impress the babe. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the way you earn a square is by determining if the celebrity is giving a correct answer. What a fun show we're going to have. <laughs> and we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> And the best part is they show during this segment the Q current he's reading. Yep. And of course, red means action. Black are the words you're supposed to say. But he's because reading. this is 1986, and that's the way things go. <laughs> I still want to know who the heck that pudgy celebrity is. It just said pudgy. Pudgy. It just said pudgy. 
Just said, look, look, look at it. I, they showed uh, the, the grid of, of celebrities, and in the bottom center uh, square, it said Pudgy. Who the heck or what the heck is Pudgy? I have no idea. All I know is I was looking at the center square. Gladys Knight was in the center square because this was season one, and they didn't know where they were going to go with this. Yeah. Because this was like November 86, so... Yeah. Like, having Larry Bud Melman as host for the uh, for the November 6th show, or at least the November 6th open, that was about as daring as it got back then. Oh, but would you believe, guys, that Larry Bud Melman had a cameo in the 1987 comedy horror film My Demon Lover, where he played... Man in hell food store where he drops dead in a scene. What? No, I'm not kidding. But guys, you're not going to believe this. All right. While doing my research on this segment, I found out that in the movie, do you know who plays the female love interest in My Demon Lover? It's somebody who we've talked about recently within the last two months. Jennifer Holmes. No. The actress who plays the female love interest in My Demon Lover is Michelle Little from The Return of the Shaggy Dog. I'm sorry, what? I'm not kidding. Okay. I expected something more shocking that you'd be. Uh, no, no, no. Did you not notice the faces I was making and the pause in sort of inflection in my voice saying, I have no idea how to react to this. No idea how to react to this at all. Oh, but you know, guys, in addition to... <laughs> Did you know that Larry Bud Melman had his own VHS tape? Uh, among other things, yes. He had a VHS tape that spoofed the workout craze of the 1980s called I do remember this. And this is a future entry in itself. Larry Bud Melvin's Couch Potato Workout. Where it's basically exercise but you're too fat and then you just eat stuff while working out on the couch. Breathe. Breathe, Greg. Oh, breathe. God. This is like some of the most ridiculous crap I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. Oh, and I do have an answer as to who Pudgy is. Oh, okay. That's great. Uh, uh, yeah, apparently, Pudgy was a stand-up comic. Uh, she was uh, apparently like a New York City legend of sorts. Oh. Yeah. Uh, used to appear all the time on the Mike Douglas show, Merv Griffin. Yeah. And not with us any longer. Uh, oh. At the time of her death, uh, she was uh, starring at... Uh, a show at the Flamingo Hotel in Vegas. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, one time there was this great moment with Larry where they actually <laughs> the the show sent him to <laughs> on an RV and it was a Pan American Goodwill tour where the whole goal was to send him on an RV from New York to the southern post tip of South America in Tierra del Fuego. I think, where is that? Is that down like in Chile or something? Uh, Tierra del Fuego, I believe that is uh, like Argentina. That's like Argentina, yeah. Oh my God. Well, yeah. They would have like Larry do updates to Dave, but since it was like 1988. There's, like, no such thing as, like, Zoom or whatever. So he has, like, a picture phone to show where he is. And this oh, is, wow. like, incredible. Hold on a second. There he is. There we he's... believe that uh, tonight he's somewhere in uh, Mississippi. Uh, they left a week ago, and their ultimate goal is down here, the southernmost tip of Argentina, in Tierra del Fuego. That's right. Say it with me. Tierra del Fuego. All right. We understand uh, Mr. DeForest, the gifted actor who portrays Larry Bud Melman on this program, is on the line right here. Let me see if this is him. Hello, uh, Calvert. Uh, is this you? 
How are you? Just fine. Uh, all right, Calvert, I'll tell you what, we have this little picture device. We're going to set it up so we can take a, take a look at you. Now, the last time we spoke with you, where were you? Uh, <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky. There you go. And, and that was a few days ago, and I asked you not to shave. Have you been shaving? No, Dave, but right. I would like to ask a favor. What's that? The beard itches like crazy. Can I get rid of it when I go into a hotel? They think I'm crazy with the beard. Yeah, it makes no difference with or without the beard. You're going to have this problem the rest of your life. <laughs> now, so now uh, let's, we, 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 we want a picture, so uh, get ready and send us a picture, all right? Uh -huh. Okay. Picture coming here. We'll get a look at the Calvert DeForest, this amazing device. Look at that 1988 technology. <laughs> wow, that, that is some beard. <laughs> That's, that, Calvert, that's grown in three days? Yes, David. <laughs> I would like to get rid of it, please. Sort of hideous hormonal That looks like the kind of TV you would get at a Montgomery Wards. What's it doing uh, Calvert, sending pictures? Uh, where are you exactly? We're in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and who are those? Uh, 100 miles outside of New York. I see. And who are those people behind you? Uh, Rick Hotsock, who uh -huh. is the account executive at WLBT. Uh -huh. His wife, Debbie. Son Neil and daughter Katie. Yeah, and, and why have they let you into their home? To do the interview. What interview? <laughs> Are you having cocktails, Calvert? Not at the moment, David. No, I'm very sober. Uh, now, how is everyone getting along on the trip? I know you're traveling with a driver and a couple of friends and some people from the show. How, how is the mood? What's the morale like? The mood is very good, David. Morale uh -huh. is very high. So far. Everyone's getting along. There hasn't been any petty bickering, no arguments. No, no nothing at all, David. No, no feuding. No feuding or fighting. Uh huh. Are you telling me the truth, Calvert? David, would I ever lie to you? Well, I don't know. Now, okay. you, you, what time are you going to cross the border? How soon can we look forward to that? Well, we're going to be in Texas on Tuesday. Uh huh. And how have you been spreading goodwill? Oh, let's see. <laughs> well, at the different places we've been staying, people have been coming out. And meeting me and asking about the show. Uh -huh. No, that will be remembered to you. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, now you got to make time. We we want you in Mexico uh, the middle of next week. We'll be in Laredo, Texas on Tuesday, David. Uh, okay, uh, and then you cross into the uh, across the border then. Uh, yes, David. Uh, all right. Well, you is everything all right? Everything's fine, David. Except I still want the beard taken off. No, no. You leave the beard on. You look great. <laughs> yes, David. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Calvert. Good You're luck. And it was like an epic disaster. <laughs> so much so that, spoiler alert, he didn't reach Tierra del Fuego. Well, I just wonder. I, I don't think he could do the, uh, the the photos like he did the pictures. Uh, now, Chico, I think, was talking about that phone Remember back in like 87, 88, they did offer those video phones where if both people had these phones, you could send pictures to each other, albeit you saw how slowly it filled in. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. Did Panasonic make those? Well, it did say Panasonic, but also, again, just to, to, because geekery needs to be involved in here, they gave away those phones at least on Classic Concentration. Yes, they did. Oh, really? I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, like, sat down and watched an episode of Classic Concentration since last year when they were doing the sort of run where it was, like, Loud Sweater Friday, you know? Well, yeah, they had that technology, and uh, obviously that didn't work. But, hey, you know, if it wasn't for that technology, we wouldn't have the technology we're using nowadays. Oh, that we is We wouldn't true. have the technology we're using right now. But but also, I think another issue would be when he got down to South America, do they have the same uh, electrical outlets as we do, or would he need a converter? He, he would need, need a converter, converter I'd assume. He yeah, would need a so th th that would be problematic. Plus, also, I could only imagine how much the long-distance tolls from, say, Rio or or Buenos Aires or where have you in, in uh, South America, how expensive it would be just to send that one photo. By the way, we do have a clip of Dave on later with Bob Costas explaining what a disaster this whole thing was with the Pan American Goodwill tour with Larry. So here we go. You're going to play that, right? Yeah. We had a, uh, an idea to send Larry on a, 
I guess the idea was originally. Are we about out of time? Yeah, by we're, the no, way? we're just we're just going. We're just going. <sighs> are you getting bored now, Dave? No, I'm just tired of hearing myself talk. Uh, America clamors for this. I find that difficult to believe. Uh, we were going to send him across country on a bus or something, and then uh, Steve O'Donnell, our head writer, said, "Why don't we send him uh, to South America, like a, a, a Pan American goodwill tour?" And he would phone in various yeah. reports. And we all thought that this was a, a, a lovely idea because there would be Larry down there maybe with a, uh, a phone uh, report two or three times a week and just see how he was responding to various cultural influences. And uh, the, the thing just from the very beginning w was uh, a debacle. They left on a Friday night and in a big uh, mobile home with a, a, a plywood sign affixed to the side of the mobile home. And they're, uh, they're blowing down the New Jersey Turnpike at about 60 and aerodynamics being what they are, this huge plywood sign is wrested from the side of the vehicle and goes sailing through the night down the highway behind them. Uh, they pulled over and, and phoned the show and said, we, we think we may have decapitated some people. <laughs> this is like 45 minutes into his Pan American Goodwill tour. Uh, and nothing ruins Goodwill like highway mayhem. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, and a few then, deaths early yeah. establish a tone that's hard to overcome. It really is. It stays on your record. And then from that, it just got to be, it was silly. It was like Larry thought that the purpose of this trip was a vacation for him, and would we please stop bothering him? <laughs> and, and it just it gradually, I mean, you could you almost... You were pulling him out of the lounge? He was there with babes and stuff? And uh, the... Not, well, we could have lived with that, but uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, <laughs> We, we would talk to Larry on the phone, and it would be like uh, um, insurgents had burst into his hotel room and clubbed him to near death. <laughs> I mean, he just had no spirit, no enthusiasm, no energy. And he'd say, Larry, it's, it's a show. Just for eight seconds on the phone, pick it up a little bit. No, nope. and every time we called him, he wanted to come home. I, I think his finest moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Nothing he thought, sort of a disaster. He thought it was a vacation for him. <laughs> this is why you take tabs on your people, people. <laughs> well, guys, who could forget over the years the legendary 1-800-COLLECT commercials that Larry Bud Melman did over the years? Of course, this would be around the time where he was starting out appearing on The Late Show with David Letterman. And interesting story behind that. We'll get to that momentarily, but let's play some ads. Oh, hey, Mike, you're going to love this. This is an ad featuring Ed O'Neill. Are you ready for this? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, here we go. Phone Patrol from 1-800-COLLECT. Attention, citizens! I've got big news! 1-800-COLLECT is now 10 cents a minute every evening! <laughs> Whoa, 10 cents a minute, that's cheap. Yep, 1-800-COLLECT, you'll save so much you can buy a new hairstyle, Sonny. <laughs> I never thought collect calling could be so inexpensive. <laughs> Isn't saving money fun? 1-800-COLLECT, 10 cents a minute every evening. All Man, 1-800-COLLECT. <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. Oh, yep. Oh, here's one with Larry as a lifeguard. Okay, here we go. I am not a role model. Oh! I am not paid to be a role model. I am a spokesperson. No, I am paid to extol the benefits of 1-800-COLLECT. <laughs> yeah, you are. That was obviously okay. a parody of the Charles Barkley... I'm not a role model. Yeah, I was just going to say that. And if you saw the date on that, it was 1995. And that was right about the time Charles Barkley did that when he first went to the Suns. Yep. And by the way, to this day, Charles Barkley is still not a role model. Oh, no. Especially terrible, when, he, terrible. when he watched terrible. TNT. <laughs> oh, hey. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Andy Richter at the 1995 Spring trading for the replacement players. Did you know that Larry Bud Melman was a replacement player in 1995? Come again for Big Fudge? Despite going old for 56 as a replacement player, as well as committing 37 errors, 
People ask if I'm disappointed that the strike is over. For me, just showing everyone how much money could be saved by dialing 1-800-COLLECT. That was the opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> 37 errors. Could you imagine that? 37 errors. 0 for 56 record. And still better than Angel Hernandez. Oh, still better than Angel Hernandez. And don't worry, I'll have a, I'll have some speaks with that home plate umpire after the game. Ooh. You know what? His on-base percentage is perhaps miles better than Gleyber Torres right now. Oh, geez. Anyone could be better than Gleyber Torres' <laughs> OBP right now on the Yankees. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I went you... there. Hey. I said what I said, and I said it with my whole chest. We've already shown Larry at various remotes over the years. We've talked about him at the bus terminal and at the Empire State Building. But did you know that they would even have Larry Bud Millman reporting live from Rotes at political conventions? So here we go. Well, I could definitely see that happening. Yes. I can see that, actually. Well, here's Larry Bud Millman at the 1992 Republican National Convention at the Houston Astrodome. We're ready to go back down to Houston, ladies and gentlemen. On the program tonight, James Woods is here, uh, Carol Leifer and Sister Carol. Larry, can you hear me in the Astrodome there in Houston, Texas, on the floor of the Republican National Convention? Go ahead, Larry. It's Larry Bud Melman reporting live from the Republican Convention. And I have a confession to make. I have a crush on Pat Buchanan. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that has to do with the proceedings, but thank you very much, Larry, for sharing that with all of North America. Larry? 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 <laughs> okay, there, there's some trouble again down there in, in Houston. Okay. With our old friend Larry. <laughs> okay, Bud now Melvin. I got another great, another great moment from Larry at the convention. Houston, Texas. Larry, can you give us an idea? Larry, can you give us an idea? Hello, Dave. This oh. is Larry Bud reporting from the Republican convention. You won't believe this, but moments ago, Leslie Stahl from CBS News came over and pinched me on the ass. <laughs> I bet you she would. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh jeez. And and also we should add a little bit over a year later, where would uh, Dave and and company end up? On CBS with yep. Leslie Stahl. Oh <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's what we call in this business a segue. So we had Larry Bud Melman do the first segment on the cold open and late night with David Letterman in 1982. So here's the cold open from the first late show with David Letterman on CBS from 1983. Before you play it, we have to explain uh, uh, something here because NBC insists that Larry Bud Melman was their intellectual property, so they could not use the Larry Bud Melman name on CBS's late show. No, they would had to refer to him by his real name of Calvert DeForest. Yes. Well, here's the opening. This is CBS. There you go. There it is. He just came out of the CBSI. The first moment Letterman was on CBS. That was the thing of beauty. Yep. <laughs> This is CBS. This is CBS! He just stood there. I was waiting for him to laugh or something, but he just stood there. You know, we talked about Larry Bud Melman creating his own video, uh, or at least starring his own video, his, his couch potato exercise video. Did you know he was also an author? I did know this, because as a matter of fact, Mike, on Don Giller's YouTube channel, He's plugging the book on Tom Snyder's CNBC show because, and here's a fun fact, Calvert DeForest 
was the last guest on Tom Snyder's CNBC show. Oh, no, I didn't know that. That's cool. I didn't know that either. I did not know that until today. Well, I have a copy of that book, as you guys can see in our uh, video chat. It is called Cheap Advice, A Guide to Low-Cost Luxury by Calvert DeForest, the guy who played Larry Bud Millman. And it actually even says that uh, at the bottom, the guy who played Larry Bud Millman, so they can at least acknowledge him as that uh, in the book. Uh, Obviously not on... Uh, on uh, on CBS, and well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, they they use that name. Uh, you mentioned the uh, NBC intellectual property, but they allowed it on this book, or at least they, they got it by on this book. I, I don't know. Uh, it was uh, published in late 1994, December 1994, and uh, there's just a bunch of uh, humorous uh, uh, tidbits. As to how, again, a cheap advice, a guide to low-cost luxury, getting rich, health and fitness, travel, show business, romance, crime and punishment, art, public speaking, school, and just general advice. Would you like a sampling of some of his advice? Yes, I would. I would love a sample of some of his advice. All right. I'll give you... Some good TV movie ideas and then some bad TV movie ideas. A good TV movie idea. Country Western singer's abuse of marriage ends in murder-suicide. Okay, I can buy that. Hideously painful, incurable epidemic sweeps through big city housing project. Bush administration conspiracy blamed. I'm not going for a COVID joke. Two young boys from broken homes change the world for the better while learning to stand on their own. High priest call girls turn the tables on international drug cartel. Obsessed fan stalks and slays popular soap opera star, then lands a role on the same soap opera. Cindy Crawford's sex diary. Those are good TV movie ideas. Now, do you want the bad ones? Yes. All right. I I don't even know if I'm going to get through this first one. Richard Pryor's Barbecue Secrets. Like I said, Richard Pryor's Barbecue Secrets. The County Sewer Commission approves a $9 million rural development project. A cute little duck swims around in a pond for two hours. Oh, boy. Asian family arrives in America, works very hard in small neighborhood shop. They save their money and move from a crime-infested city to a safe suburb, kids do well in school. Guy wins lottery and handles newfound riches with dignity and intelligence. B. Arthur's sex diary. (laughs) Oh, God! And, and Greg, Greg, I need to show you the image for this. They they have a picture of, of, uh, uh, of Calvert DeForest for the good TV movie ideas. And it looks like he's wearing like a white T-shirt and and and, uh, and slacks in the uh, the good TV movies uh, movie ideas. In the bad ones, I seriously think this might be the predecessor to Angle Gablogian. Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh. I'm gonna move right up I there so Kevin can see him. Face. Oh. He might be Angle Gablogian's <laughs> long lost. Brother. <laughs> That's why I said I think this is the, the predecessor to Angle Gabogian. Oh boy. <laughs> oh Jesus. Okay, so so there's some of your cheap advice from a cheap book. Not even doing uh, non-eBay prices right. List price was $8.99. I got it for two dollars. Where'd you find it? You know, that's a good question. I don't recall if I found this at a uh, a bookstore um, at, at a chain that was around here back in the 90s, or uh, it wasn't half price books. It doesn't have a half price books tag on it. I really don't remember where I bought it, but it must have been sometime around 95, 96. So obviously these weren't really flying off the shelves at that time. It may have been like a closeout bookstore for all I know. Probably. But it's been in this household for over 25 years, so there you go. Hey, do you want to imagine Calvert DeForest, Larry Bud Melman at Woodstock in 94? 
Why, yes, oh, yes, no, I do. Oh, no. Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Well, there had to be something entertaining at Woodstock 94. Uh, <laughs> it's, no, you're thinking of Woodstock 99. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the one that's going to be featured on an HBO documentary real soon. Okay, here we go. August 12th, 1994, Woodstock. The original Woodstock in upstate New York, and we do have live reports from that site right now with our good friend Calvert DeForest. Hal, do me a favor, turn on the big CBS satellite. Let's go live now to Saugerties, New York, for our Woodstock report with our old friend Calvert DeForest. Here we go. Calvert! Calvert! Hello! Calvert, can you hear me? Yes! How, how are things at Woodstock? They're wonderful. We have big crowds. We have great weather. It's fabulous. Have you seen anybody naked yet? Only one naked man. That was it. <laughs> and where exactly did that take place, Calvert? That took place on the grounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not up here. Let me, let me ask you something, Calvert. Is it, is it more than a music concert? What was that, Dave? Is it, is it a three-day festival of peace and love? Yes, Dave. All right. Now, we want you to give us reports all night long as to what's going on. Can you do that? I think so. All right, start with your little report right now, and we'll come back to you later. Let's hear it. All right. This is Calvert G. Forrest, yeah, I know. live from Woodstock. Right. I don't have much to report right now. <laughs> I just spent the last four hours trapped in a port of sand. Okay, okay. here it is. Live from Woodstock. Oh, God. Oh, God. I think what amazes me is he would have been about 73 at that time. Oh, yeah, 73. But I guarantee you all the kids, they loved Calvert DeForest. Well, well again, as we said, he was like a, a cultural icon for that decade from like 82 to, well, beyond 92 or 93. But yeah, people would know who he is. They'd know him probably mostly as the 1-800-collect guy at that time. Oh, yeah. I think he actually did a Clio Awards one year. Oh, my God. As the 1-800-collect guy. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'd have to look. Oh, yeah. And I'll play it here. He had a cameo in the 1993 Alex Winter Randy Craig classic Freak, which I'll play right here for you because I played it in the 2020 year end review special to tease 2021. So I might as well include it here. Boy, I haven't seen a stampede like this since the opening night of each star. Anyway, here's here's some more of Calvert at Woodstock. You ready? Here we go. This is Calvert D. Forrest reporting live from Woodstock. I can tell you from her sand experience, the brown acid is too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here's one that I remember very well. They actually sent Calvert to the 1996 World Series between the Yankees and the Braves. So you ready for this? I am always ready to see the Yankees on this show. Uh, now, you see, wait, now, you see, this is the year, 95 and 97, the Indians were in the World Series. They weren't in this year. This, this might be a little tough for me to swallow. Yeah, but they did beat Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Which, which who eliminated you. So you got to take some solace in that. Yep. Yeah. Let's yeah. see Calvert DeForest with the Yankees at the World Series in 1996. Yeah. You know, our, uh, our correspondent down there in Atlanta, Calvert DeForest, look, this is a copy of the uh, Washington Post. What a rag. And uh, <laughs> right there on the cover of the sports page, there's Oh, a look at that. Oh. There. There's Calvert DeForest. Look at that. What is he's, that? Hugging. Joe, he's hugging Joe Torrey on the cover of. The Washington Post. That's oh, nice. That's, that's great. And that's a big picture. It's not like a little image. That could Well, they have like... to take a big picture because Calvert the Forest is so tiny. Well, I, I get well, I get that. But I'm talking about compared to what you usually see in newspapers, 
that's below the fold. So that's over oh. half the page is that picture. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. All right. Nice on that. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Last night in Atlanta, uh, after the game, they, uh, they announced their engagement. I know, <laughs> It's odd, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, That's but odd. sweet. I'm telling you something. Go to the Home Run Derby format. That's... Turn on the uh, satellite, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go live to Atlanta now, where they're getting ready for tonight's World Series game. Nice of them to uh, drag out the uh, graphics package. I like that they recycled the old CBS MLB intro for that. I just said that, yeah. Nice to see you. How are things down there in Fulton County Stadium? Great. <laughs> this man is really a wordsmith, isn't he? Oh, he has man. a way of capturing the electricity and the excitement and putting it into just a few short, succinct phrases. Yeah. Uh, Calvert, yeah. uh, were people pretty upset about the uh, Yankee uh, victory last night down there in Atlanta? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> So the Yankee victory didn't trouble the Atlanta fans at all. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they, they're not under the impression this was an exhibition game, are they, Calvert? Oh, of course not. Yeah. Calvert, do you have somebody there to chat with us tonight? Yeah. Yes, I do. All I'm right. here with home run hitter Jim Lairett. <laughs> oh, Jim Lairett. Yeah. Uh, look at those guns, son. <laughs> Jim, congratulations. Big game last night. Nice going. Everybody ready for tonight's game? Yeah, we're getting ready tonight. We want to come home and win it there in New York. Yeah. And uh, were you surprised? <laughs> All right. Were you surprised to learn that nobody in Atlanta was disappointed about the Braves getting beat last night? I think they were a little disappointed down here, Dave. We were yeah. out a little bit last night and they weren't too happy. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> well, tell that to your friend. Uh, <laughs> All right, Calvert, go ahead. Ask him some questions. Yes, I do. As a catcher, <laughs> do you enjoy squatting? Uh, it's a little troublesome, troublesome sometimes, but uh, it's, it's part of the job and I got to do it. Well, do you have a name for your bat? Actually, I have a couple bats, uh, but I don't have any personal names for them, no. Well, how about Debbie? Debbie. <laughs> nice name. Does George Steinbrenner ever join you fellas in the shower? No, that's off limits to the owner. <laughs> And then shower. Well, <laughs> would you like a good luck hug? Can I trust you? Me, yes, I'm hard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. If you can't trust Calvert Morris, who can you trust? Oh. That's a new thing. You know what? People should name their bats. I named my bat Harry. Harry. Harry hey, Alexander. Hey, hey I, I named my bat. Hey, I named my leg, okay? You don't mess with old Betsy. Betsy. <laughs> old Betsy. I thought, I thought Betsy was the name of your Guitar Hero controller. No, no. Well, uh, unless, uh, you know, my leg is a uh, guitar. Oh, no. Oh, 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 no. oh, come on. No. Man, Warner Brother, man. Warner Brother. Okay, I'm going to show you old Betsy. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you, you can name your bad and... You name your prosthetic leg, of course. Uh, but uh, one thing I will say is Larry Bud Melman, or in this case, Calvert DeForest, since we're at CBS at this point, Calvert DeForest at the World Series is no Biff Henderson at the Super Bowl. No. No. Um, no, by no means. Uh, I always loved when they would send Biff to wherever to do some comedy gold. Just... And, the, and, oh, the, oh, and the beauty oh. of it is because it's CBS Sports, and we'll talk about this next year, they could do that. Yeah, that, that's one of the, uh, I, I don't want to say a few uh, recurring segments I uh, always uh, can't wait to see on Letterman. But it's up there with like the Halloween costumes. Yeah, we, we got to see uh, what mischief Biff Henderson is going to do at the Super Bowl this year. Or, or the uh, Jay Thomas Lone Ranger story every year. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Leave everything to me. Citizen. Citizen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I got to say, Larry Bud Melman, one of the all-time great personalities, and it was really fun 
doing this episode, revisiting all the stuff he's done over the years, or he did over the years for David Letterman. It was just such a treat to go back to it. Well, I will add, he did more than just David Letterman, because actually, if you recall, when we did the Dana Carvey show, he was on the first episode. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was. The the Taco Bell Dana Carvey show, yes. The the Taco Bell Dana Carvey show. Yeah, that was the sponsorship on the first episode. Go listen to that uh, episode if you want to know more about that. Yeah, it's it's somewhere in the 40s, I think. It, it was yeah, uh, over well over a year ago at this point. I, I should also add that uh, Calvert Forest, Greg. I hope you're sitting down. What he was on a final season episode of Wings. What he was on season eight, episode sixteen, Escape from New York, and he didn't really have a big role. He was listed as club patron. Club patron. That's it. Club patron. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, that would have been one of the last, what, probably like 10 episodes? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? I only hope he had a scene with Tony Shaloub. Well, you know, if the Wings channel on Pluto TV ever gets out of the first and second season, we'll be able to find out. Oh, yeah. I especially want to get to the uh, to the later seasons just to get to the Amy Yazbek episodes. And Tony Shalhoub. And Tony, and more Tony Shalhoub. Oh, I can't forget about Tony Shalhoub. Because, you know, it did make his career. Yes, it did. It did. Hey, hey Greg. What? The episode Escape from New York of Wings. Yeah. yeah. Is on YouTube. Oh, hold up. You guys link me it. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. I know what episode this is. This is the episode where Crystal Bernard really wants to see Rent. I remember this episode as a kid. I remember Crystal Bernard saying, I want to go see Rant. And that Texas... (laughs) I want to see Rant. In that nice southern drawl she's got. (laughs) Here we go. Into a diva. (laughs) You won't have to pay for her here, pal. This place is Babe City. (laughs) (laughs) One line, and it was delivered so well. It was delivered as only he could. And he gives the Larry Bud Melman laugh. (laughs) (laughs) And then the following scene... Uh, apparently is in an apartment, and guess who's on the screen? Tony Shalhoub. Oh, yes. Th- th- this clearly did make his career. Oh, yeah, with Tim Daly, because this made his career. This made Tony Shalhoub's mm-hmm. career. We all know that. And by the way, Crystal Bernard, she really wanted to see Rant. She wants to see Rant? I remember this episode so much as a kid. It <laughs> was stuck in my mind. Crystal Bernard really wanted to see Rent. <laughs> Stop wasting her 525,600 minutes, guys. Well, who wouldn't want to see Rent? Come on. I, I, I want to see Rent. It has Daryl from Adventures and Baby sitting in it. Oh, my gosh. I'm who, sorry. Who's now on Star Trek Discovery, Chico? Yeah, I know. I know this. Okay, I, I have regrets looking at the IMDb of this episode. Why? Uh, just one of the names of one of the drag queens. Okay. I, I, I'm not even joking. Is this Jizzle Drizzle level? Uh, approaching it, but not Jizzle Drizzle level. Ginger Vitus. <laughs> that's, actually, and, 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 that's actually not bad. I mean, I've heard far worse. Wait, wait, wait. And and then the other one, the other drag queen, was named Eva Destruction. <laughs> Ginger Vitus and Eva Destruction. I'm surprised they haven't been in a season of Drag Race. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm, I'm looking into that. Oh, uh, God. W- well, the, uh, looking at 
Uh, the person who played Ginger, I can't say with a straight face. The person who played Ginger Vitus on, on uh, uh, the IMDb, th this person named Jasmine, J-A-Z-Z-M-U-N, not even joking, made her first national television appearance on the 1980s talent variety show, Putting on the Hits. Oh, oh I Alec love Putting on the Hits. His, uh, Alec Bossett and his man perm for the win. Putting on the hits was oh that that was Saturday night in the Klaus House back in the mid eighties when Showtime and the Apollo couldn't do it. Putting on the hits. Putting on the hits was like seven thirty Saturday night, and the entire family watched it. And we it probably saw me. Jasmine, and we enjoyed Jasmine. <laughs> what if Ginger Vitus was on putting on the hits? <laughs> Ginger Vitus is on putting on the hits. It would be even better. Ginger Vitus on the jizzle drizzle. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. I have nothing for that. Well, unfortunately, Calvert DeForest left us on March 19th, 2007, at the age of 85. Actually, according to Truth by Consensus Wikipedia, actually died in West Islip, New York. That's not too far from where you are, right? Yeah, not too far from where I live, no. So, yeah. But, you know what? He left behind a legacy of entertainment for all of us to enjoy. Yeah, definitely yep. an icon. There'll never be anyone like him. No. no I, don't, I couldn't even think of any sidekick or uh, companion on a late night show that might even compare to that. I mean, the best I could probably come up with and, and albeit, you know, the show just ended is Andy Richter on Conan. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have like sidekicks on late night anymore. No. Nope. And, and we definitely don't have like uh, these characters like Larry Bud Melman. I mean, the closest we have to like a Larry Bud Melman ish character is probably Yaya from Jimmy Kimmel. Or Guillermo. Why not both? Oh, why not both? Yeah, that is true. Guillermo's like the closest we have to a modern day Larry Bud Melman. Well, you know, I'm going to make a parallel, and this is a real stretch. Larry Bud Melman was on Hollywood Squares. Guillermo was on Celebrity Name Game. And he was the worst celebrity ever. <laughs> on Celebrity oh, Name Game. He was on Celebrity Name Game for like a week. And he was horrible. He was like an albatross just <laughs> hanging around uh, contestants' necks. Could you imagine Guillermo and Yaya on Celebrity Name Game? Oh, Jesus. Could you imagine? Oh, no. That, that'll be the first four hour long show because it'll take him that long to get the, the $3,000. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there's rules against that. But you know what? Larry Bud Melman. This month we celebrate your 100th birthday and you gave us many memorable things on TV. Ha 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 ha! To that I raise my Dr. Pepper. Uh, I raise my Coke. I have nothing in my cup, but if I did, I'd salute Larry right now. Well, guys... You can always go to our website. It was a thing on TV.com where we have so much material on our website now. We have over 200 episodes worth of material on there now. Just amazing. From regular episodes to mini shows to director's cuts to live shows. Just, oh my God. And that's not counting the stuff we have over at Place to Be Nation. Oh no. Because, of course, as I mentioned, this week we released the director's cut of the Bicentennial Minute. Just an incredible episode to construct for you guys. And uh, two hours, over 20 minutes worth of additional material in that episode. You're going to love it. Go over there, and we'll eventually release it onto our regular feed sometime in the next couple of months. And, and, and eventually it. also onto our YouTube. And speaking of our YouTube, don't forget to go to our YouTube page. Like us. Subscribe. Remember, give us a like because positive vibes. And don't forget to subscribe to us and hit the bell. 
in order to stay updated on future entries. Like the two we have next week. Oh, next week, guys. Hey, guys. We're finally going to cover the Olympics on this podcast. Yeah, we had a year delay, but hey, it's coming up. Yeah, and we've been saving these five episodes for you for the last year. And trust me, you're going to enjoy this next batch of five episodes, and you're really going to enjoy them. Starting next week, we're going to present one of the biggest bombs in television history. We're starting off this with a bang. Yep. And then, getting inside the mind of one of the chillest swimmers ever to take to an Olympic-sized pool. Hey guys, I got a question. How many swims are we going to give this episode? Oh, it's going to be at least ten. Ten swims. In swims. Ten, ten, or, ten or twelve, maybe even fifteen. I would say this, 75 swims, because as we all know, guys, if you're a man at night, you got to be a man in the morning. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. And that's all coming up next week on It Was a Thing on TV. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Well, this has been a Melman production.